Hello everyone and welcome to Beckham Rooney episode 2. I wasn't expecting there to be an episode 2. But Beckham Rooney sent Cassandra another friend request. At the time I didn't realise it was another one so Cassandra just accepted it. And then I thought, hang on, hasn't she already spoken to him? And I scrolled down her list of contacts and there he was from a week previously. Except that that version of Beckham Rooney as you saw in the previous video, blocked Cassandra. So I suspect that as often happens, this is a team of scammers using several similar accounts. Hello, good day. How are you doing today? I hope I found you in a very good health, said Beckham Rooney the second to Cassandra. Exactly the same introduction he always uses. I'm very well, thank you, said Cassandra. So tell me, how's the weather condition over there? Question mark, he said, as usual. The weather condition? said Cassandra. Our meteorologist is cloudy with a 54% chance of rain and light southwesterly winds. Oh, I'm very sorry about that, he said. But you see, right now I'm not in the state because I've been transferred by the United Nations to work in a where peacekeeping camp over here in Syria. A fair warning, ladies and gentlemen, if you're eating or drinking, please swallow now. A where peacekeeping camp? replied Cassandra. Has war broken out in the underwear drawer? That! Keep on going all the time, he said. I prefer to keep mine separate, replied Cassandra. It avoids so many of those petty squabbles. Socks can get so jealous. If I may ask, where are you working? he asked. Oh, darling, I don't work. That's so last year, isn't it? Cassandra's had a makeover, and she's now a rich heiress. What do you mean here? he asked. I suppose you could say I run the family estate, she said. The housekeeper and the estate manager do the work. Is that what your work is all about, he asked. Yes, it is. What's your work? I have no idea what a peacekeeper actually does. And you're not alone in that, Cassandra. Peacekeeping means someone who went out on a mission, he said. Eh, I thought all soldiers went on missions, not just those that are peacekeeping. I'm not a soldier. I, a am just a military doctor, an orthopaedic surgeon doctor, what a surprise, with the UN. That is what my job is all about. Eh, okay, so you aren't on mission. Where did you qualify as a surgeon? She asked. I'm the doctor taking care of those military men here, in case any of them got any bullet shot from those Taliban's. Eh, I thought you said you were an orthopaedic surgeon, not one who treats wounds. Yes, that's the same thing. I'm still telling you right now, said our experienced military orthopaedic surgeon. Where did you qualify as a bullet-removing orthopaedic surgeon? She asked. To which our man replied several question marks. Why are you asking? You don't understand where did you qualify? She said, I presume you did go to medical school or did you do an online course? I'm led to believe that remote learning is quite the thing these days. My great-uncle Johann Sebastian de Vorberg einsfeld was an eminent neurosurgeon. He studied at the einsfeld holstein Institute of Medicine, long since closed, of course. 1996, he said. Is that a place? replied Cassandra. Where is it? Summit Orthopaedics, he said. Where's that? she asked. Is a very local place in Germany, he said. That place is not that common. Oh, OK. You studied medicine at Summit Orthopaedics in Germany. Your name sounds so familiar, but I can't for the life of me think why. Yeah, that's where I work, he said. Can I know more about you? Tell me how old you are. I don't understand how that's an answer to me saying that your name sounds familiar. I'm 63. Or are you saying that Beckham Rooney is the name of the place where you work in Damascus? No, Beckham Rooney is my name, he said. OK, she said. It just sounds familiar, but I really can't think why. Have we met? I'm working in Damascus, Syria, he said. Yes, you've said that. I asked why your name sounds familiar. Have we met? I'm beginning to think you might have reading and comprehension difficulties, which is more than a little alarming for a surgeon. Yes, we both have come across each other before, he said. Well, obviously they had. And I think this might have been about when I realised. Eh, I don't remember where replied Cassandra. Can you please tell me? It's just that I have a problem with my phone and I have to get a new one. But when I did, I can access my account because I can't remember the password. So I have to create a new account to add you up again. 
You really do have comprehension issues, don't you? replied Cassandra. Please could you tell me where we met before? That has nothing to do with the password on your account. We both used to talk on Facebook before, but you know that as a doctor, I'm always busy. It's just this few days. I'm not that much busy. That's why I decided to spend more time of knowing more about you, because we both have not spent much time talking with each other that much because of time. I really don't remember you, replied Cassandra, but I talk to so many people. I see you forget so easily, he said. I thank God that this is the time you can know me, because I want us to talk more better about ourselves. Eh, I do agree that talking more better is the thing one should do. It's so much better than just talking, don't you think? Perhaps you could give me some helpful tips on how one should talk more better. Thanks for your understanding, he said. I'm currently 65 years old and am a single day with one lovely son, Alvin. Do you have grandchildren? she asked. Yes, I have just one son, he said. Is that yes, I do have grandchildren? How many? I said, I have one son. Oh dear, your comprehension difficulty is worse than I thought. She said, I asked, do you have grandchildren? And you said, yes. To which our man replied, yes. How many grandchildren do you have? She asked. But our man felt a copy and paste paragraph coming on. I'm a widower. I lost my late wife three years ago when she had a PKD, polycystic kidney disease. We both had one wonderful son together. We named him Alvin, and he's 14 years, respectively. And I love him with all my heart. And you know all this, ladies and gentlemen. He said it several times before in the previous video. He's the only family I've got. I'm blessed when I see him. I do miss him so much when he's gone for school. I do realise you have severe understanding and reading difficulties, replied Cassandra, but I asked how many grandchildren you have. You've told me twice that you have grandchildren. How many do you have? What's wrong with you, he said. Can't you see that I'm saying that just one son? I think if you don't like talking to me, you better stop. I knew you have just one son, replied Cassandra. I asked you if you have grandchildren. I don't know why you're so difficult to talk to. I'm guessing that your first year studies at medical school would have taught you the difference between children and grandchildren. No, I don't have, he said. I understand what you mean here, my friend, he said, in reply to her saying that his first year studies at medical school should have taught him the difference. Phew, at last, she said. It's just tedious when one has to ask a basic question so many times, especially when one is talking to a highly educated and intelligent man. OK, he said. So, guess what? What are you doing right now? I'm counting the number of diamond rings in my jewellery box, she said. What are you doing right now? I'm talking to you, he said, pitching my usual line. Do you have a diamonds box? he asked. Oh, yes, of course I do, she said. Where else would one keep one's diamonds? I'm asking, because I don't have one, he said. Where do you keep your diamonds? asked Cassandra. Can you please send me a photo of it? he said, like you've been saving that for a very long time. And if the person that you're talking to online suddenly asks you for a random photograph, something that you've mentioned to them, the clothes you're wearing, the food you're eating, your jewellery box, anything really, then there's a fairly hard chance you're talking to a scammer. Firstly, why would someone ask? And secondly, so that they can use them if they're trying to scam other potential victims. Imagine if Cassandra really did have a box full of diamonds. Just think how useful that could potentially have been to a scammer. In it, replied Cassandra. I can't send a photo of it. I wouldn't want burglars to know what it looks like. Why would you want to see it anyway? I deposited mine under a security company in the place I work first, before I was transferred to work here in Syria, he said. I wish to see. Is there anything bad for me asking you to show me? Are we not friends? Eh, replied Cassandra. You said you don't have one. Now, magically, you do. It's a box. Like Cassandra again, I can think of no earthly reason why a grown gentleman would want to see a photograph of a box. I mean, not here with me, because I can't carry that to a war place like this, when you know a lot of bad things happen every day. I guess taking the family's jewels to a war zone would probably not be a good idea, replied Cassandra. Yeah, that's why I don't have to bring them here. My son can't keep them, because he's still a little boy. My lovely boy is currently in the Canada Military Academy. He studies under the Department of Medicine there. Remember, he's 14. They're still undergoing their academic studies. Oh, the military academy have their own medical school. Yeah, he said. OK, where is it in Canada? Toronto City, he said. 
How'd you come to have a box of diamonds? she asked. At this point, a man started to flounder, because it isn't part of his usual story, and he didn't know what to do. Why do you want to know everything about me? Besides, you've not told me much about yourself, and I've told you more about yourself, he said. I do beg your pardon, good sir, for being interested in you, she said. I apologise for thinking you might be an interesting man to talk to. It's most obvious that I was misguided in believing that. Really? I feel very amazing reading this from you. But it's just little by little. As time goes on, you will get to know me more better. OK? If you say so, by Cassandra. But obviously I won't ask you any further questions. Nor, of course, will I answer any. Because obviously I would wonder why do you want to know everything about me? It's because I like you, he said. And you know how to talk to someone. I'm so glad to meet you. I know he's God willing for making the both of us to be together because we both understand ourselves. So tell me, are you married with kids or single? To which Cassandra replied, Where do you want to know everything about me? Besides, you haven't told me that about yourself yet. Well, I've told you about myself, he said. And actually he had. I've told you about my kid and I've told you how I lost my wife. Oh, yes. I had to ask you at least half a dozen times why you informed me that you had grandchildren, and then said you didn't. Not! I don't say I have grandchildren, he said. I only told you that I have a son. Oh dear, replied Cassandra, whose comprehension difficulties have returned. And she copied and pasted the two places where he'd said, yes, he did have grandchildren. You told me twice that you have grandchildren. I really do have better things to do with my life than talk to someone who can't remember if he has grandchildren or not. That's where you're getting me wrong! I just said son, he said. No, good sir, replied Cassandra. You clearly un unequivocally said yes, twice. I don't know what you're trying to ask me, if I have a grandson there, he said. Eh, so you didn't understand, do you have grandchildren? You really are more stupid than I thought, and that's quite hard. No, I don't have, he said. I think we've agreed that you don't have grandchildren, and you were too stupid to understand the question, she said. What's wrong with you, he said. Is there anyone who's above mistake? If you don't know how to talk to someone, you'd better stop talking to me. Why all this insult? I don't think I've met anyone who mistakenly thought they had grandchildren. Strange mistake to make, replied Cassandra. It's the kind of mistake a scammer would make, isn't it? Someone who can't remember which story they're supposed to be telling. I'm busy when you're chatting me. Don't you know as a doctor, you think a lot of think in your head, he said. Oh dear. A doctor who mistakenly believes he has grandchildren. That sounds like a serious delusion. Perhaps one of your colleagues might be able to help you. Or maybe you are just a scammer. It seems our man decided he was just a scammer because he disappeared. And of course, all those confessions in the previous video and his assertion that he wanted to repent were, as we all knew, fake. I hope you enjoyed this bonus episode of Beckham Rooney. If you did, please like it. Please share it. Please comment down below. Please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when a video goes live. And I'll see you again in another video.